Hello and welcome to another budget and leggy video. Now this is going to be a really interesting video. We've got two cases here, one from me, one from another YouTuber, which I'll get into in the second part of the video. But it's basically when not to follow engine codes. When can they lead you astray? I have two really good cases, one of me and one from someone else. And basically this is when it's really really good to listen to your customer find out what's going on find out what problem they're having and take your diagnosis from there the first thing and the, always the best thing is to do is plug a car in and do follow your engine codes or your codes compared to what problem you're having now if you're having a problem with the engine and you're having some weird issue with your lights don't maybe particularly worry about it as such you know follow the code that suits your problem but it might lead you in the completely wrong direction. This car is a 2007 Toyota Corolla 1.4 and the customer is complaining like in first gear it's kind of jerky, maybe it's lost power. He said to me like it's not getting enough petrol. That was his thing. And we had an engine light on and we had a P4 zero, uh, P420 uh, code. Oh, you can't see me. Light's gone. A P0420. Right. So that is a catalyst uh, problem. So then what you normally do is you check your fuel trims and i'm going to show you now what i checked and just yeah well i'll show you rather than explain and then i'll show you what the problem actually is right so like i said you go off your codes first as you can see we're in closed loop so if i just go to my graph now um right let me first go on to the o2s now, yes, you need to do with snap throttles and all that, but I've done all that. I'm just quickly showing you. You can see our front one is switching and our rear one is, is, is basically stable. And not only that, people, this car yesterday passed the NCT test. So I know my emissions are perfect, right? I know that 100%. And as you can see from that graph, it is 100%. So like I said, this car passed the test yesterday. I know our, our emissions are good. We can see from that that our front O2 is switching, our rear one isn't, so that's good. Now, this does have an aftermarket cat in. This is where you have to be careful. The car doesn't like the cat. It's just too sensitive. Toyotas, Hondas, Peugeots, Citroëns, some of them can be really, really fussy. They have to have a genuine cat for the light to stay off. But as you can see from the emission side of things, it is okay, it's just the light comes on. So this has had an aftermarket cat about three years ago, I believe, and this light came on, I can't remember how long ago, but anyway, so bear that in mind. So what you do next is, you think, well, okay, let's go for the fuel trims, because the fuel trims are important. The fuel trims tell us everything. You know, is our injectors okay? Are our plugs okay? Is our fuel pump okay? You know, is the car adding fuel? Is it taking away fuel? Is it happy? It basically says, everything so we're going to check that next we will just go back to our o2s as you can see there look lovely and yes we was in closed loop system that is important to be in closed loops let's check our fuel trims now right here's our fuel trims as you can see practically perfect absolute zero so let's give it a snap throttle snap throttle as you can see Snap throttle perfect. If we rev it up, again, nothing wrong with that. That's it now revved, just over three grand. And as you can see, look, absolutely perfect. Just let that settle now. That might go a little bit skew whiffy. Um, just kind of let it settle as you can see, yeah. The other thing is that it's it's not going too far below as you rev it up. What I mean by that is it's not kind of dropping down and, and uh, the speedo is going all over the place. It's not doing anything like that. It recovers after a few seconds, as you can see. So there we go. Um, our fuel trims are okay. Right, so what does that tell us? Like I said, this is an aftermarket cat. Uh, Toyota, Peugeot, Honda and Citroen, they just do not like aftermarket cats in certain models and certain cases. We know this cat is working perfectly because you can see that basically uh, our fuel trims are perfect, our, cat, our O2s are perfect, it's passed the test yesterday, a matter of hours ago, literally, you know, less than 24 hours ago, it's passed the test, and you know, it's absolutely perfect. So in my head when it first came in, and what the customer was saying, I saw an engine light on, I saw that code, I initially went straight for fuel trims thinking, ha, I can get a really good fuel trim video out of this. Because like I said, with fuel trims, we basically, we can tell if we've got a dodgy fuel pump, if we've got dodgy injectors, you know, the, the, the intake system, if we've got leaks, you know, we can just tell a lot 
from fuel trims but our fuel trims are perfect and yet he's complaining of a kind of a fuel issue problem in the sense of when he says he puts into gear especially first gear it doesn't it, it's like it, it's like he, he said it's not getting enough petrol and it's kind of jerking and juddering this is why you need to listen to the customer and basically what I found in this particular case, I've checked everything, all the data pids I can, I've taken it for a drive, nothing looks out of place whatsoever. My fuel trims, the fact that my fuel trims are that good leads me to believe that there's nothing really wrong with the engine because our fuel trims, like I said, imagine fuel trims as like you know, uh, taking a blood test. It basically says everything about your body. Fuel trim says everything about the car. And our fuel trims are perfect. And I mean perfect. I mean, you, you physically will not get better fuel trims than this. I've seen cars, you know, run at six, seven, eight percent and they still run perfectly. This is practically zero. So yeah, sometimes you need to listen to the customer and the problem is you need to get the, as much information from the customer as you can and maybe not necessarily listen to your what your car is saying because we know our cat is good it's passed the test it's passed my test it's just the car in certain circumstances says no hold on wait there's something not right here because they've they've obviously set the computer so so critical and they've done it kind of on purpose so only their stuff works so if you do buy an aftermarket cat you have this problem and of course the customer thinks you know oh, i have to go back to the main dealer because a normal garage can't fix it and all this sort of stuff where no it's just not the customer is going to have to put up with the with the uh, engine light unless he wants to spend a fortune replacing it for a genuine cat which isn't going to solve his problem the problem the only problem i can find is this hope you can see that the clutch pedal now you're not gonna be able to feel this obviously i mean unless my videos are that good you can actually feel it um but that clutch pedal is really really hard and i mean really hard this is only a 1.4 corolla that clutch pedal shouldn't be that hard also when i'm changing gear yes that is a bowl um anyway <laughs> when i'm changing gear sometimes okay didn't freaking do it there when you're driving it it's a bit hard to get into gear it goes into gear but it doesn't go smoothly so the only problems i can really see with this car is the clutch pedal is too hard so the clutch is on its way out possibility also gear link cables are a bit dodgy it has done over 320,000 kilometers now i think it has a, had a clutch replaced in its time as well but that clutch yeah and i think he maybe just put it in gear first gear and let the foot off maybe a bit too quick because this this clutch doesn't really slip it just kind of goes and when he third gear seems a bit stiff to get like there there now look my foot's on the clutch see that and third gear now hear that perfect i'm so happy i got that my foot was down on the clutch and you heard that kind of grind into gear so yeah absolutely perfect clutch problem possibility of gear linkage issues as well i couldn't have asked for anything better then my foot was fully down on the clutch it wouldn't go into third gear and i'm stationary it should have gone into third gear no problem whatsoever now i think from i think we've got a couple of issues i think we've got a clutch issue and possibly a gear linkage issues both of them because the clutch is too hard and the gear linkage just doesn't feel great so this is a perfect one to, to know not to always trust what the car says. When you have an error code, go off the error code first, the error code first, but don't necessarily trust it. You can see from the live data, our fuel trims are perfect, our O2s are perfect. And once I see that, I'm not worried about it's flagging up a code because I know it passed the test yesterday. Did I say that? Did I say it passed the test yesterday? I said that, I think I have. Our fuel trims are perfect. Our O2s are perfect. It's not a fueling issue with the car. And it's not just a fueling issue. With our fuel trim being like that, that also shows us there's no leaks, intake leaks. It also shows us like the mass sense and all that sort of stuff. All the intake side of things, all the exhaust side of things, all the injectors, the pumps, and everything is perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'm putting this down to a clutch and gear linkage cables. Now we can talk about another cool fault that happens and you're not necessarily always look at your error codes first also this is where you have to be careful because you could go to a garage they could then 
replace the cat in this car, which, and if they do a genuine one or a main Toyota dealer or whoever, and yes, the light will then go out if it's a genuine one or if it's a brand new one or if it's a second hand one. Or if it's an aftermarket one for a few years, it'll go out. And then if you get used to the clutch, you'll think, oh, okay, they've fixed it. But no, they haven't because the problem was never that in the first place. This is why fuel trims, understanding fuel trims are so, so important. And people believe me, they are simple. They're not difficult to understand. I was hoping to get a really good fuel trim video out of this but I can't, but honestly, they're not difficult to understand. Don't let people pretend they are. They are not, they are simple, and they can tell you a hell of a lot about your engine. Right, let's go old school on fuel trims. Who needs fancy computers, fancy live data? Boom, look at the spark plugs. Absolutely perfect. They're biscuit color, they're not black, they're not wet, they're not absolutely anything. That is what you want to see biscuit color on them spark plugs even that there tells me we're not running too rich we're not running too lean we're running absolutely perfect so forget about live data just even doing plugs like that people can show you everything old school there's a lot to be said about old school and that is another really quick and easy way and once i see that on all four plugs yeah there's nothing wrong with this engine, people. 100% nothing wrong with this engine. Right, and the other person that, like I said from the beginning of the video, his channel is called Can Diagnostics. I'll leave the link down in the description below. Um, he's only just started. He's, he's really knowledgeable, and he's going to be doing some really good videos in the future. And this also will give him a good kick up the arse to actually do videos. But basically what he had, he had a van that came in, and there was lots of problems with it. He went to another shop. It had all sorts of problems. They said it was head gaskets or timing belts, or I'm not sure what. And it was still having the same issue, where basically it would start, and then it would stop, and it would sound really, really bad. Now, basically, he has three or four different scan tools because he was trying them all, and I'll put pictures up here, and as you can see, some of them were reading kind of different faults, even though when you look into it properly, they're kind of the same fault, really. Um, but basically, they're saying ABS issues. So, of course, you naturally go to the ABS pump first. You check all your powers, your grounds, you do all sorts of stuff. And he was getting all that. He was disconnecting sensors and it was coming up with the error codes. And then we we're kind of thinking, well, hold on a second. It doesn't really look like the ABS module because it is, you can communicate with it. We're unplugging sensors. We're getting error codes. This, this isn't to do with the actual starting or stopping of the vehicle. There's maybe an ABS fault somewhere, but there's nothing to do with this fault. And this is why I'm saying you have to be careful sometimes and experience kind of, you know, tells and stuff like that. But anyway, as you can see, what he did is so he went back through all the live data and he found the throttle position sensor. And as you can see from the picture, I'm going to stick up here. Um, you know, the readings were wrong. So then he started, you know, checking out, scoping it, you know, making sure it's all OK basically put another another throttle pedal in and boom it was fixed now i am going to try and get other videos off him because i think he did do a, a show me a video of it running really badly so if i got that i'll, I'll edit this in as well all right this is what i got happening the van will start and then pretty much dodge damn bus, no communication with vbcm electronic brake control mark. listen to this She not like it. But basically, as you can see from all the pictures, we were getting no throttle position sensors fault whatsoever, which is unusual. And yet it was a throttle position, well, it was a pedal that was causing the problems in this particular vehicle, but we was getting ABS problems. So there's maybe another ABS fault, but that's not stopping it from starting. And this is why I'm saying you have to be very, very careful Go through your live data just like I did. And once you go through your live data, if you find something weird or whatever like that, and, you know, all our live data was good, so then you kind of have to look at other things. But, you know, it's always good to go back to the basics, check the basics, and don't necessarily always go for the error code. Now, always go for the error code, if that makes sense. But if you start getting readings and it was, you know, it's all good, then just forget it because you're just going to be there for hours upon hours, days upon days, getting absolutely nowhere. Then go back to the basics. Two problems, 
two separate problems in two separate countries in this in these particular cases it had nothing to do with the error code that was shown so hopefully people get something out of this video that not necessarily always best to go on your error codes it's not that the scan tools are lying it's just that you know whatever there may be just something weird in the computer that's not throwing up that fault because maybe it's like half a percent out of actually throwing up a fault or something weird you just don't know and it can cause a nightmare because if you've got a, a error especially in a modern car with all the sensors and everything and it all looks good it really does cause a problem sometimes you might have to leave the vehicle to create a bigger problem before you can actually diagnose it and i know that sounds crazy but without error codes without actually you know finding a problem and actually verifying it you can't fix a problem there's no point guessing because there's no point throwing you know very expensive parts in like the one i did for example you know that would have been like a 900 euro cap that goes into that and all that would have done is turn off the light um it wouldn't have solved the issue he was actually having. So just bear that in mind before you actually start going crazy on buying stuff. Check your data, check everything properly, go through everything. So look, it is really as simple as that. So look, I hope it helps. Check out his uh, new uh, YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, as always, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.